It's time for the November blocks for our Civil War sampler. This month, we're going to be doing blocks 16, 17, 18, and 28. And if you've been a little frustrated or feeling overwhelmed by the blocks that we've been making and the detail that's involved in them, you're going to be very happy to know that November is pretty much the easiest blocks in the entire quilt. So let's get started, and we're going to begin with block number 28. The Soldier's Aid 9 patch block is number 28 in your book, and this, in my opinion, is the easiest way to take the blocks that are divided into three units and turn them into an 8-inch finished block. Because what we've done here is this is the two inch finished squares for your nine patch block. So that would be two, four, six. And then a one inch border the whole way around brings it up to the eight inch finished size. So it's super easy to put together. All you have to do is choose one square to be your center. And then you can put your lighter squares around that. And you can use the same fabrics or scrappy fabrics if you're interested. And then go ahead and put your darks like this. You're going to sew it together the way you would normally sew a nine patch together. Put your uh, pieces together in rows. Press the seams towards the dark and then out and towards the dark. And then once your block is assembled, you're just going to go ahead and add the one inch strips around the outside. And that will bring you up to an 8 inch finished block. So this is the block that will be going into my red and tan quilt. And then this is the block that I've done for my multicolored block. So super easy. It really doesn't get much easier than that. Nice even measurements of cut two and a half exactly the way they tell you in the book and then cut one and a half for our outside border. So Block number 28 will be very easy to assemble. Next up is block number 16, which is the Tennessee block. And as you can see, it's set up exactly the same way as number 28, the Soldier's Aid. But in this case, Barbara has you cutting so that this entire block finishes at 8 inches or 12 inches without a border around the outside edge. To make things easier, I've decided that I'm going to finish this as a six inch finish block and add the same border that I added around the soldier's aid block number 28. I don't want the soldier's aid block to be the only quilt or the only block in my quilt that has a border around the outside edge. So I'm going to lay mine out exactly this way and I'm going to change my sizes. So this square would be a two inch finished. It would be cut two and a half. All of the half square triangles will also be two and a half raw edge to raw edge, but they would be two inches finished in your quilt. So we can lay our block out just that way. Now before I move my binder here, I want you to take a special note of this quilt that's right here. This actually has, I think, 56 blocks in it. So it's a little bit larger than the um, one of every block in the book. But also, you notice it has a much simpler sashing on it. So if you're looking for a way to put your blocks together and you don't want it to be quite as complicated in the sashing, this is a great example for you. It still has cornerstones, but all of these little sashing pieces in between are all light and they are all from different scrap fabrics so you don't have to have all the same fabric for your sashing. But let me show you how I'm putting my block together. So I'm going to take my half square triangles and I've matched three of them for the top corner. You can see that here they're all scrappy and here they're totally random scrappy for, uh, backgrounds and the um, hatchet shape that they have there. And so interesting center block and then three more half square triangles. Remember in my case these are cut two and a half. These are my two and a half inch cut squares. 
So when I sew this together, it will be a six inch finished block. And then I'll have to go back and add my sashing strips to it to bring it up to the eight inch finished size. For the block that's going to go into my multicolored quilt, this is the block that I made. And you can see that I've already added my sashing pieces around the outside edge. Now, whether those sashing pieces are light or dark around the outside edge depends on what the color sashing is you're going to be putting in between the blocks. So that's up to you and your choice for your individual quilt. Now, one more thing. If you're looking at the layout diagram in the front pages of the book for where each block fits in the quilt, you'll notice that this has a pink tab on it. That means that this block is actually not shown in the quilt that's on the front cover of the book. So next up is block 17. So block number 17, which is called Calico Puzzle, follows along with the same theme. You can see that it's a simple nine patch block and if you follow Barbara's instructions, you'll be working with 1 8 inch or 7 8 inch cuts. But if you simply reduce it to a 6 inch finished block and add a border, you can reduce those cuts to a 2 and a half inch square or a 2 and a half inch half square triangle and assemble it as a 9 patch. So this is the way that I'll be putting mine together. I've got my solid squares and my center square will lay out like this and then my half square triangles go in the corners and they pivot so each one turns one quarter turn so that they form the pattern that you see in the book. So I'll sew this together as you would a nine patch and I'll be pressing these seams in, these seams out, and these seams in. And then when I assemble my rows, I'll press these towards the center row because that's just the path of least resistance. And then once I've got my block assembled, I'll go back and add the sashing strips that I have cut to the left and the right and the top and the bottom that will bring this block up to an eight and a half inch measurement raw edge to raw edge and it will be eight inches finished in my quilt. So this is the block that's going into my red and cream colored quilt and so it will all of them will have a light sashing around the outside edge. Now the block that's going into my multicolored quilt has a dark sashing around the outside edge and that's so that it will meet up with light sashing in that quilt. So this is your calico puzzle block number 17 and you can put it together following the instructions, the cutting instructions in the book and if you do that the squares, each one of these squares will need to measure two and two-thirds inches. If you reduce the size and make it a six inch, each one of these finished would be two inches or cut two and a half. Our last block for October is number 18, the tea leaf. Now this is a standard leaf block and once again it follows our theme of it's a nine patch block and you can follow along with the cutting instructions in the book and make your block at an eight inch finished or you can do what I've done and reduce the size of the tea leaf itself and add a border around the outside edge. So if you're going to reduce them once again it's a two inch finished square and a two inch finished half square triangle so this would be cut two and a half and your color choices can be anything so here you see that um, the three in the center, the two points and the one in the center match, these two match and these two match. Here these three squares match and all the points are the same. I've chose to have these two match and accent here and my three points match on this one. And then I have my brown stem. 
Now, this also will get a border around the outside edge because my block measures six inches finished. When I add the border, it will be an eight inch finished block. So if you would like to make yours completely scrappy, you can do that as well. So these are the pieces for my multicolored block that I'm making. And I chose fall colors because to me it looks a little more like a fall leaf than a tea leaf. So that's why I went with the fall colors. Now we need the stem here. And the stem is actually pieced between two triangles. I think the easiest way to do this is to actually follow the cutting instructions in the book for um, pieces C and D. When you sew the center between here, so when I've stitched these together and then opened them up and stitched these together, I pressed this flat, my seams are open, and then I used my square ruler laid the square down the center, the diagonal line down the center of my stem, and trimmed this to measure two and a half inches. It was oversized before, because remember I'm making a smaller block. So I think that's the easiest way to get this cent the stem centered between the two triangles. So sew your triangles on first, and then do that. Now as far as how your seams should be pressed, normally I press my seams closed, so I would then go back and press these into the center. When you press them into the center, that puts a little more thickness under your stem, so it gives it just the tiniest bit of dimension. And chances are if you're quilting, even if you're doing some custom quilting on this, you won't be quilting on the stem where the extra thickness is. So once again, we're going to assemble it the same way that we would a nine patch those three together, these three together, and these three together. And then you're going to press your seams in one direction or the other, and then sew your rows together. And then after I've sewn my rows together, this one's going to get a dark brown border for my multicolored quilt. So those are your four blocks for the month of October. I hope you enjoy making these because they should go together quickly and easily.